Okay, so um, this one actually doesn't have sunlight backup on it, but I'll speak to sunlight backup in a second. So can you guys see this, this slide? Yes. Okay, cool. So with sunlight backup, you are providing backup for critical loads and only four. Now, remember, loads technically, when I say only four, the technical way to say that is only four breakers. Loads are what go downstream of the breakers. So if I had five things plugged in, that could take up one breaker. But basically, you're going to have no more than four breakers, 15 or 20 breakers connected when it comes to sunlight backup. That's all. What it can power in house, what they release the four breakers. 15 and 20 amp breakers. So like refrigerator, charger, yes. fan, what, what, yes. what it can power? Yeah, so what, I'm gonna put the question back to you. Do you, know, do you know what loads are typically on a 15 or a 20 amp breaker? No, I don't. Okay, cool. So uh, 15 and 20 amp breakers are typically made up of a few different types of um, loads. So one is, very common is a lighting load. So lights are typically on 15 amp breakers. So all the lights that are on 15 amp breakers, you could power. Now, normally they're distributed among three or four breakers. So you may not power all the lights. You might just power them in like the kitchen and the office or something. It depends on how the house is wired. So lighting, outlets, right? All the plugs are either gonna be 15 or 20 amp breakers, right? Everywhere you plug in a computer, a laptop, a cell phone charger, all the plugs in the kitchen are in 15 and 20 amp breakers. So we do something like a blender, even a microwave is usually on the 20 amp breaker, right? So all of the plugs and outlets and lights are typically on 15 amp breakers. So to answer your question, lights, anything that plugs into an outlet, internet, TV, computer, cell phone chargers, possibly a microwave, blender, you know, toaster oven, and all refrigerator. Of that. And, and, refrigerator. Refriger and refrigerator. Yep. That's what, what is has free refrigerators? Can you do it with the free refrigerators or not? So you're going to want to put three breakers on backup. If those three refrigerators are on three separate breakers and you do those three refrigerators and also a, um, you know, one other lighting circuit, if that's what they want to prioritize, sure, why not? See, the amount of power during the daytime is going to be a lot, typically, depending on the size of the system. Now, you got to use your judgment too, right? If it's a 5KW solar system, would I put free three refrigerators on there? Probably not. But if it's a 12KW solar system and he's got two refrigerators on one outlet and maybe another refrigerator on another outlet, I put that on sunlight backup. Does that answer your question for sunlight backup? Okay, and 3K battery, what's the difference above sunlight backup? Great question. So with a 3K battery, it's, it's gonna provide two major benefits. The first benefit is if you're on sunlight backup and a cloud goes overhead, you're losing power. Remember, you have no store of energy. The only energy that's being provided is what's being generated by the sun. So if the sun goes away, your power goes away. And that could, depending on what climate you're in, create a less than ideal experience for your customers. Now I'm in San Diego. Uh, San Diego has one of the best environments for sunlight backup because we have a lot of really sunny days. Um, but if I was in the Northeast, I'd be a little more conservative about what I'd put on sunlight backup. If I'm in Texas or Florida, I'd probably be a little bit more aggressive on what I'd put in sunlight backup. Regardless, even in Florida, if a cloud goes overhead, you're going to reduce your solar output a lot. How much will it reduce? We say typically, even on a cloudy overcast day, your solar panels should produce 30%. So you might still get 30%. But if you have a battery, now all of a sudden you have this kind of this bank that you can pull from if there's a cloud overhead. That's the first major benefit. So you're going to have, I call it an enhanced IQ8 experience. 
with an IQ battery tree. The other pretty obvious benefit is when the sun goes down in the evening time, if you don't have a battery, you have zero power. So if you have a three on there, at least you'd have enough power to keep the lights probably running. Your fridge will probably run, right? Depending on the size fridge, you could probably have your internet up. Maybe it's not all night long at full power, but maybe it's till nine or 10, right? Which is probably pretty good. So that's the major step up you're going to get when you go from a sunlight backup option to the IQ battery three option. You're getting a better enhanced daytime experience and you're getting some power at nighttime that you store during the daytime. Does that all make sense? Next 10 to one, one battery, 10 K battery. Yeah. So, so now, now you have your 10. Now what you're doing is you're actually adding more power and energy at nighttime. So where before you might not be able to run through the whole night. Now you're running through the whole night with those essential loads. You're maybe getting more things that are working at the same time. And an IQ battery three is very, very low output in terms of power. So in the nighttime, you're going to have really limited functionality. But with an IQ battery 10, you're going to be able to live pretty well. The 10 has almost four kilowatts of power. It's very rare that somebody uses four kilowatts um, in an instant if they're not running their oven or their air conditioning. Um, so what, why I say that is think about four kilowatts times 24 hours a day is 96 kilowatts, kilowatt hours a day. If they're running four kilowatts all the time, that's 96 kilowatts. 96 kilowatts a day is uh, 96 times 365 is 35 kilowatt hours per year. Sorry, 35,000 kilowatt hours per year. 35,000 kilowatt hours is like, uh, I mean, 96 kilowatt hours per day is like to offset that you need like a 25 kilowatt solar system. Anyways, I'm getting, getting, getting through some other math and kind of getting off, off track a little bit. But anyways, to make the long story short, an N charge 10, an IQ battery 10 is going to be able to provide a lot more power and energy at la nighttime. When I say power and energy, power is again, really important concept to understand when it comes to storage is the size of the pipe. What do I mean the size of the pipe? Well, if you think of energy like water, right? The more power you have, the bigger pipe you have, meaning you can feed more appliances at the same time. So when you go from an IQ battery three to an IQ battery 10, two things happen. One is the pipe gets bigger at nighttime specifically. And two is the lake of water you have to drain, right? To use also gets bigger. So you have more water that you stored and you have a bigger pipe to feed the appliances. So that's with a 10 go to a 20. You're going, you're start. It's the starter for a whole home backup. If they want to back up everything, if they want to back up large loads like air conditioning, if they want to back up, you know, an oven that's 50 amps or a pool pump, um, you know, they're really looking at a 20 kWh system or larger. Um, so that's kind of the, the back of the envelope. Could you, somebody asked earlier, could I put an air conditioning on an IQ battery 10? And my answer is carefully. What do I mean by carefully? Well, technically if you have a, decent sized solar system in the daytime, you're going to be able to power that air conditioning directly off the sun with IQ eights. But on a 10 at nighttime, that air conditioning is not going to work. Not, not probably not even going to turn on. So if you're getting if you're putting an air conditioning on backup with a 10 power may not even allow that. But if you're doing that, you got to be super impeccable with the homeowner. Just so you know, the only time your air conditioning is possibly going to run is during the daytime. If you really want your air conditioning to run, we should get you an IQ battery 20. That's if you really need to, you know, if you're in Texas, you know, it's funny in San Diego, I say things like, Oh, you know, having your air conditioning run in is a luxury. Um, you know, if there's a blackout, cause it's super rare in Texas and Florida, I hear people all the time say it's like life or death. If my air conditioning doesn't run, it's, this is like a safety situation. Right. And if you're doing that and you're, I don't mean to say this, but if you're, I'll say it, 
if you're cheaping out on a solution for them by giving them an IQ battery 10 with IQ eights and, and promising them their air conditioning going to run that that's a, that could be a real big liability for the customer. That's not a good idea. If somebody's like, oh, I don't really care. I'd like to have my air conditioning run, but you know, it, it's, it's not super important to me. Um, you know, I would have them disclose that on the sheet. There's that special sign sheet that you can say, this is a maybe option. And I even make sure I've had multiple emails that I have documented saying to them, your air conditioning will not run in the evening time. It'll only run when the sun is shining. Spencer, what you're actually saying, what you're actually saying with even with one 10 K battery or three K battery throughout the day with the sunlight backup, the AC will run throughout the day. Is it correct? Did I understand? So you're correctly photon, uh, photon AC, five K five ton AC. Is it right or wrong? Um, well, I, I can't, I, if, let me answer it this way. If you have to ask the question where you need to be black and white, the answer is no. And I'm not trying to say that to diminish the question because it's a valuable question, but, um, there's a lot of, you, technically you really should do the math. You should figure out what's the exact nameplate. How much power is there? Am I putting the air conditioning on load control? Am I setting expectations with the homeowner? And if that's not something you're super comfortable with, which might take some more training and practice, then no. Air conditioning, no air conditioning on a 10, definitely no air conditioning on IQ battery three. Not because it couldn't work, but because it's gonna provide a really poor experience for the customer and might not work all the time. And you don't want to set up a customer to, you know, you don't want to put a customer in that situation.